So here's a way to impose a time limit on a quiz question in Articulate Storyline. Let's say I've got this question and I want to give the learner three tries, but I also only want to give them 15 seconds total to come up with the right answer. And if they don't, I'm going to consider this question wrong. So here's one way that we can do that. If we open up the question editor, you can see that for my attempts, I've set this to three. So that's where our three tries are coming from. And here's my answer choices, car, motorcycle, bike, bus, and truck. Plus I've added this additional answer choice that will get marked if the learner runs out of time. And I'm actually gonna make this answer choice invisible to the learner unless they do run out of time. And if that happens, I'm gonna make the choice visible and I'm gonna mark it. And I'm gonna prevent the learner from marking any other option. And I'll also show them a message letting them know that they ran out of time. So let's save and close out of here and we'll see how we do this. First, let's take a look at our slide layers down here in the lower right. Right above the base layer of the slide are these three layers that Storyline creates for me when I set up my quiz question. One of them's for the correct feedback, another for incorrect, and this third one is what the learner sees if they get the question wrong, but they still have some attempts left. Now, normally these layers don't look black like this. Usually you get, you know, the message is gonna appear as kind of a pop-up over top of the question, unless you customize it to look otherwise. But since I've got this time limit that I want to impose, I didn't want the learner to be able to hang out here on the feedback layer and still be able to see part of the question because what I've done is these layers, you know, pause the timeline, which means um, when the layer appears, it'll also pause my time limit that I've placed on the question. And I didn't want the learner to be able to study the question while they're looking at their feedback. So I just added this black rectangle to uh, kind of conceal the other question stuff behind the feedback. I also did a couple things on my base layer. Remember this answer choice here that we wanted to make invisible um, initially. Well, here's how we do that. In the panel below my slide here in the states pane, you can see that the initial state of that object is set to hidden. Now, normally this defaults to normal, but you can change it to hidden and then tell Storyline with a trigger when you want that object to be visible. And we'll show you how to do that in a second. The other thing is on the timeline, if we go out here to our 15 second mark when we want the question time to be up, I've got this group of objects that's appearing on my slide at right the 15 second mark right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it visible so you can see it. It's real simple, uh, just a partially transparent rectangle, a little text box, and a button. And this group of objects is kind of serving two purposes. Um, one is it tells the learner that their time is up, but it also prevents them from clicking on anything else on the slide because it's you know covering up those answer choices. And then the other thing is over here in the trigger panel, I've got some cool things going on related to the appearance of this group of objects at 15 seconds. The first trigger here is changing the state of that invisible radio button to normal. So it's making that item visible when the timeline of this group starts. So in other words, when this group comes on screen, that radio button becomes visible. And then right as soon as that happens, it also becomes selected. So that item becomes selected as soon as 15 seconds, you know, hits the timeline. If that does happen, we also want to disable the submit button on the player if the time is up, right? Especially if we're allowing multiple attempts on the question. Because if the learner does run out of time, but they still have some attempts left, we don't want that submit button to do anything. Otherwise, they would be able to go back and look at the question again with a try again button. So what we can do is create a simple true false variable that notices whether the time is up or not. And if it is, we can attach a condition to our submit button. So let's talk about the variable first. I'm gonna click on this little X here to open up our project variables. And here's the one that I created. It's called times up. It's a true false variable. And initially I set the value to false because the time won't be up when the learner first gets to the slide. In fact, on every quiz slide, if we go to view slide master, here's the master that I use for my quiz slides. I set up a trigger here on the master that causes Storyline to consider this value as false whenever the learner gets to a quiz question. The only time it flips to true is right here. I've got this trigger that says to set that variable to a value of true when the timeline of our group of objects at 15 seconds comes on screen. So it's the only time that it becomes true. And so here's the behavior. Once we preview or publish, we'll see how this would act for our learners. So here's our question. We'll answer incorrectly. We get a try again, answering correctly again, we get the try again again. And now if we go very out here to the end of the timeline, we get this um, message saying we've run out of time. There's our answer choice that's visible and we can't hit submit anymore. We have to hit continue in order to move on to the next slide.